totally wrong facts about a PC everyone still believes. Let's get started. Number 1. RAM can be used as VRAM. Let's talk about a myth I personally believed when I was just starting out with PCs. I was around 16 when I bought my first graphics card at GTX 1060 with 3GB of VRAM from the secondhand market. At first, I was excited, but at the same time, I wasn't fully happy, because after watching a bunch of reviews and expert takes, I kept hearing the same thing over and over. 3GB of VRAM just isn't enough. People were calling it a bottleneck, a bad investment, even a total waste of money. So there I was sitting in front of my screen thinking, why the hell did I buy this? I could've added just a little more and bought the 6GB version, or even gone with an RX 570 with 4GB, which had better performance for basically the same price. I feel like I got scammed, so I listed it back on the secondhand market, hoping to recover what I could. Eventually, I sold it, at a loss of course, and then the guy who bought it told me something that really stuck with me. He said, you could've just bought more RAM, it'll make up for the missing VRAM. At that moment, I didn't know whether to laugh, cry, or uninstall Windows entirely. I was kinda glad that I sold it. I don't know if that person was trying to trick me or if he actually believed that nonsense, but either way, I honestly felt sorry for him. Because in reality, that's not how it works. VRAM and RAM are two completely different things. RAM is for your CPU. It handles system tasks, apps, background processes. VRAM is your GPU's memory. It stores textures, shaders, lighting, basically all the visual stuff in games. You can't just add more RAM and magically solve low VRAM problems. That's not how any of this works. And with only 3GB of VRAM, some modern games will probably still run, but trust me, they'll fill up that VRAM instantly. You'll see stuttering, texture pop-ins, lowered settings, and your experience just tanks. Some games even warn you before launching, like, hey, are you sure about this? So yeah, lesson learned, don't fall for this myth. And if someone tells you to fix low VRAM with system RAM, maybe don't let them build your PC. Number 2. I don't need antivirus software. This is one of those things a lot of people really believe, that antivirus software is basically useless nowadays. Most people think the most important thing is just to be careful. Don't click random links, don't download sketchy files, and you'll be fine, right? And no, I'm not here to say you're like someone's grandpa who opens 20 pop-ups and wonders where the music coming from. I get it, you know how things work. You avoid pirated games, you don't click download on shady banners, you're smart about it. But here's the catch, even if you're careful, there's still a solid 50% chance your system could catch something. Viruses today don't need your permission, they'll sneak in quietly, whether you click something or not. Let's be honest, this isn't the early 2000s anymore. Every piece is online now, whether it's a laptop with Wi-Fi or a desktop with an Ethernet cable, it's connected 24-7. And if you got a PC, I'm almost certain that cable hasn't been unplugged in years. These days, a PC without internet is basically a fancy calculator with RGB. And because of that, there's a real chance you already have something running in the background. Maybe a crypto miner, silently eating your RAM and CPU while earning some random hacker passive income, all thanks to your electricity bill. See, viruses today aren't the dramatic red screen errors that demand ransom and screen hacked in big fonts. Nope. Now they act like spies. You don't even know how they got in, you don't see them, you don't hear them. They're just there, stealing performance and possibly worse. So what do you do? If you're in a Mac, congrats, you're safer. The system is more locked down, so downloading sketchy stuff is harder. Still not invisible, but you've got a bit more peace of mind. But if you're on Windows, well, I'm not gonna promote any random antivirus brand here, you do you. But at the very least, turn on Windows Defender. Yeah, I know some people hate it, but still run a scan every now and then. You don't need it 24-7, even a once a month is better than nothing. Especially if you haven't reinstalled Windows in the last 3 years, there's probably something in there by now. Now sometimes Windows Defender isn't enough, or it starts hugging memory like it's playing Warzone. So in that case, you might consider other options, most of them are useless but there's one I've used for years, Malware Bytes. This isn't an ad, and I don't care if you install it or not. I just like it because the interface is clean, it's easy to use, and it's not bloated. I've been using the free version for years, still works fine. If you want to try it, I'll leave the official site link. And yes, the link is affiliate, so I'll only make money if you get the premium version. But like I said, you can just use the free one like I do. Alright, let's move on to the next totally wrong PC belief. Number 3. More RAM equals more FPS 
Alright, I get it. Most PC users are gamers, but not all gamers really understand how a PC actually works. Now, in my case, I do know how it works and I play games from time to time. So when I see people saying that more RAM means more FPS, I can't help but raise an A bro. This whole belief feels like it was invented by mobile gamers. Because yeah, on smartphones, RAM kind of is the main thing that matters, but on PC, that's not how it works. Now to be fair, this fact is kind of a 50-50 situation. RAM can affect performance, but that doesn't mean adding more RAM automatically gives you more FPS. RAM is responsible for handling your PC's short-term memory. So if you've got a bunch of programs open like your browser, Discord, maybe OBS, all that information gets temporarily stored in your RAM. It helps your system juggle tasks smoothly. And yeah, having enough RAM can make launching games feel smoother, especially if you're multitasking. But here's the truth, more RAM doesn't mean more frames per second. Games have specific system requirements. If a game only needs 8GB of RAM, then adding 32GB isn't going to magically boost your FPS. That extra RAM just sits there unused. It's like bringing 10 water bottles to a 5 minute walk. It's over. Now if you only have 4GB, that's a different story. You'll probably experience stutters, long loading times, or the game might not even launch at all. So yes, meeting the RAM requirement is important, just don't expect miracles from going way beyond it. As of 2025, the sweet spot for gamers is pretty clear, 16 to 32GB of RAM. That's enough for gaming, background tasks, and even some light editing or streaming. Anything above that is probably just flexing, or you're a content creator. If you really want better FPS, focus on your graphics card and CPU, that's where the real performance boost comes from. RAM helps, but it's not the star of the show, it's more like the support character that keeps things running in the background. If you're a video editor or a 3D designer, then sure, go for the big RAM setup, but for gamers, keep it balanced, save your money for a better GPU instead. Number 4. You need an expensive, high-end PC for gaming. A lot of people still believe that to play modern games, you need some crazy $2,000 to $5,000 setup. Like if your PC doesn't look like a spaceship, it won't run cyberpunk. But that's just not true. If you're actually here to play games, not stare at ultra graphics and reflect on your life choices. 1080p gaming is still more than enough, even in 2025. And for that, you can easily build a solid PC for $800 to $1,000. Honestly, even less if you know what to buy and where to buy it. If your budget is really tight, say around $500, you can still build a system that runs demanding games at medium settings. And if you're just into competitive titles like CS2, Valorant, or Fortnite, I've literally built PC for $150 to $200 using secondhand parts that handle those games just fine. So yeah, it depends on what you're playing. Now, I'm not saying expensive builds are useless. If you've got the money and want 2K or 4K with all the sliders maxed out, go for it. No one's stopping you from building a 10K rig. It'll work, no doubt. So whether you've got a tight budget or a fat wallet, you're good either way. Just don't fall for the myth that you need to spend a fortune to game comfortably. Oh, and if your budget is literally $0, I made a video for that too. You're welcome. Number 5. Building a PC is incredibly hard. When it comes to building a PC, a lot of people are still scared to try it themselves. And that's why we still have PC assembly experts, charging you just to plug in a few parts. Some people genuinely believe building a PC is some kind of sorcery, something only the tech elite can do. Like you need years of training and wizard's license or something. And to be fair, I get it, everyone's nervous the first time. Personally, my biggest fear was that my clumsy hands would snap something in half. And when you're holding a tiny 400 processor or a paper thin RAM, it's not hard to panic. That fear makes sense, PC components are expensive for how small and fragile they look. But here's the truth, building a PC isn't magic, it's just 7 parts you need to connect, that's it. You plug in some wires, most of which are labeled, and follow the manual if you're unsure. There aren't even that many cables, especially with modern PCs and cases. And if you plug something in wrong, relax, the PC doesn't explode, it just doesn't turn on, or that one part won't work. So what do you do? You check your cables, fix it, and try again. And that's the process, not as dramatic as people imagine. Once you understand the basics, build a PC takes 20 to 30 minutes max. Seriously, it's like adult Lego, but with slightly higher stakes. And once you do it once, you'll never want to pay someone else to do it again. 
Even PewDiePie built his own PC after 14 years of gaming and admitted it was very easy. Turns out it's not rocket science, huh? So yeah, stop overthinking, don't let the fear stop you. Building a PC is way more beginner friendly than people make it out to be. And that's it. Those were some totally PC facts people still believe. Hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Take care.